Well, good afternoon. Here we are again um, in the midst of our uh, virus prevention program. I know that many of you miss our Wednesday afternoon worship and Bible study, and I appreciate how much you all love to be in church. And so here we are reconnecting with you in any way that we can. So I will read to you uh, parts of our Wednesday worship service and our text. And uh, although you can't interact with me directly, um, as we as is our custom during our worship services, uh, I'll read the text. I'll give you some thoughts, and I'll I'll leave you to um, deliberate and and discern and think and pray about the text that we have for today for yourselves and your own lives during the week. So let's prepare our hearts and our minds as we worship this afternoon on March 18th. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. God of heaven and earth, you come in close to us and you make us yours. Equip us by your spirit to confess our sin, to embrace your forgiveness, and to seek the way that you set before us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful God, we realize that we cannot break free from our imperfection. Forgive us, Lord. We were silent when we should have spoken. Forgive us, Lord. We have spoken when we should have kept quiet. Forgive us, Lord. We acted even though we knew better. Forgive us, Lord. We remain still when we should have moved. Forgive us, Lord, for the wrong we have done, for the good we have failed to do. Have mercy on us, O Lord. People of God, Look to the Son who was given to heal you, and because God loved the world so much, Christ has set you free. Take hold of your life, your forgiven life, your eternal life, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Bend your ear to our prayers, Lord Christ and walk among us, especially in these days. By your gracious life and death for us, bring light into the darkness of our hearts, and anoint us with your Spirit, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The reading for today is Philippians chapter 2, as we continue our journey through Philippians 2 and 3 during Lent. And today's verses are verses 12 through 16. Paul writes, My dear friends, you always obeyed when I was with you. Now that I am away, you should obey even more. So work with fear and trembling to discover what it really means to be saved. God is working in you to make you willing and able to obey him. Do everything without grumbling or arguing. Then you will be the pure and innocent children of God. You live among people who are crooked and evil, but you must not do anything that they can say is wrong. Try to shine as lights among the people of this world as you hold firmly to the message that gives life. Then on the day when Christ returns, I can take pride in you. I can also know that my work and my efforts were not useless. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So the thoughts I have on this text, uh, <laughs> right at the beginning, he says, uh, now that I'm away, you should obey even more. Um, now, I'm not the one away because I'm right here in my office. <laughs> You're the one who's away because we are forced to be away. So his words are poignant, I think, for this week, for all the, the weeks to come as we grapple with all this. Um, now that you are away from church, you're not getting the sustenance that you need, the community that you that you thirst for. It's, it's easy to um, just slide into different habits. And, and um, Paul is saying, you should be even more diligent now um, that you are stuck away from this community and away from church and away from the daily meals that you're used to getting from us. Um, so yeah, 
<laughs> we have to work harder and it is harder to work because the situation is so difficult right now and people are, are tense and confused, understandably so. And um, we're working with fear and trembling, not to necessarily to discover what, what it means to be saved. We're working with fear and trembling to get through tomorrow. Uh, it's a hard time right now. And I want you all to understand we acknowledge that and how much I acknowledge that and, and how sad I am that I can't have my arms literally around you right now, um, hugging, embracing this congregation. So as we lead from afar, remember Paul's first words, now that we're away, we have to work even harder. Um, then he says in verse 14, <laughs> impossible challenge, do everything without grumbling or complaining or arguing. Um, that, honestly, that's been hard to do. <laughs> it's hard to do all of this without grumbling and without arguing. Um, but this is the way it is. We are here. We are doing everything we can to try to limit the damage of this devastating disease. We're all in this together. And we all have to remember that the reason this is all happening is so that we can save one another's uh, health and potentially their lives. There's a very good reason for all of this, and we have to remember that and hold people together. And our job as disciples, as Christians, as Lutherans, um, is to be that beacon. And he even says, try to shine as lights among the people of this world. Our job right now is to be the light, to help people walk through this together. I know it's not hand in hand. I want to say hand in hand, but six feet apart, walk you through together together. Um, Remember reminding people why we're in this, why we're doing this, what the reasons are, and how many people are actually being helped by our precautionary and preemptive actions. Um, he also says, um, you must not do anything that they can say is wrong. So that's where we at St. John's are trying to be leaders in terms of trying to do what's right, even though some people don't understand um, why we are doing what we're doing right now to stay isolated and keep the building disinfected and safe. And um, we, um, we're we trying to make sure that we're, we're not doing anything that anybody can say is, is really wrong. We don't want to be part of the problem. We want to be part of the solution. And um, this is the best we can do right now. And we're finding ways to reach out. We're thinking of creative ways to, to reach to you. We're discerning and praying. The leadership is working very hard. Um, and my staff, my staff is working extra hard right now to find new ways that we can continue to be leaders in the community in this quest to contain the effects of this, this virus. So, um, I mean, Paul says, on the day when Christ returns, I can take pride in you. I can say, I take pride in you now. You are an amazing congregation. Um, you all thirst for the word. You thirst for community. You want to help. You want to be in, out there doing things, whatever we can do. It's very hard to hold you down, and I appreciate that. So um, those are those are my thoughts and i encourage you to grapple with this text again it's philippians chapter 2 verses 12 through 16 is what we're studying today and grapple with this text with your family with your friends with yourself with god and uh, we'll continue to walk through this together and i'll be with you again on sunday with uh, another abbreviated message same as we had last week so now um, may God, who has called us forth from the dust of the earth and claimed us as children of the light, strengthen you on your journey into life renewed. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. So there we are, marked with the cross of Christ. Go forth to love and serve the Lord. Amen. And thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me again this afternoon, and I'll see you Sunday.